Hello, Calculus 2 students. In this video, we will go over six series from section 5.2. The directions are all the same. Find the sum or show the series diverges, and we must fully justify our response. Well, you notice in this first series, my terms, well, it's a difference of two terms, and they look almost the same, except for one has index k plus one, and one has index k. To me, I see telescoping series, so let's write this, and then we will do the work. Telescoping series are nice because we actually use the definition of some of a series. The definition of if a series converges or diverges, and very rarely do we actually do that with our series tests. So let's write out the nth order partial sum, Sn, and we will um, simplify as much as we can. So maybe I will write out underneath. Let's do for k equals 1. Let's do k equals 2. Let's do k equals 3. And then we will jump. Hopefully we will see what all cancels off. We'll jump to k equals n. And as I'm starting this, I... I think I won't simplify what's underneath the radical um, in my first step. So k equals one, you notice I have a square root of six over two, and then minus the square root of six over one. Put a plus. Now for k equals two, we have a square root of six over three minus the square root of six over two. K equals three, this is the next one. What do we see? Well, we have a difference of two square roots, square root of six over four, minus the square root of six over three. And then the very last term, we there will be others in here, but the nth term would be a square root minus another square root. We have six over n plus one, and then minus here. This is a square root of six over n. Now, telescoping, because let's look at this together. This one and this one adds to zero. This one and this one adds to zero. And then this square root, six over four, right here. Well, in the k equals four term, we will have it subtracted off. So it will cancel off with something here. Now the very last one, this six over N, you notice will cancel off with something, it will come from the N minus first term. There will be a plus square root of six over N coming in the N minus first term, and then here's a minus. And so we're just left with two things. So let's write the simplified SN. SN, it's negative the square root of six, and then plus the square root of six divided by n plus one. Fantastic. At this point, we can calculate the sum of the series. So limit as n goes to infinity of Sn. This is by definition the sum of the series provided this limit exists as a finite number. It's a limit as n goes to infinity of this. This is something we can actually do typically Getting our hands on SN is very hard, but we can do it with telescoping series. Now, you notice here this part, the denominator is growing without bound. We have a fixed numerator, and so this goes to zero. And so we're left with um, negative square root of six. And this is the sum of the series. In particular, this series converges, but the directions say find the sum or show the series diverges. We have found the sum. Fantastic. Next question, number two. Okay, there's a couple of ways we can do this one. One way, definitely this is a geometric series, but another way is a term test. So really it's your choice. Um, I like the term test, so maybe I will do that. I will take a step here to rewrite this. So this will be two to the minus two, which is just a number, it's a fourth. And then we have two to the two n is four to the n. My denominator is three to the n. Okay, now you notice if you take a limit as n goes to infinity of the terms, two to the minus two, 
4 to the n divided by 3 to the n, we get infinity, 4 thirds to the n. That's what's happening here, right? We have this and we have this. 4 thirds to the n grows without bound. It's exponential with base bigger than 1. So this is infinity, does not exist as a finite number. In particular, this limit is not equal to 0, not equal to 0. And so, quote the test by the term test, this series diverges. Diverges is the only possible conclusion with the term test. You will never ever have a series converge by the term test. It's just not possible. Okay, let's move on. Number three, here I see a geometric series. Um, if you don't see it, just start writing out some terms. Maybe I will to illustrate the fact that I see a geometric series here. It's important to note that this series starts at k equals two. So let's start writing out some terms. Well, I will leave it unsimplified first. When k equals two, I have minus two squared divided by, this would be four to the one. Next term, I have minus two cubed divided by would be, this is k equals three would be four squared. Next term, I have minus two to the fourth. This is k equals four would be over four cubed. And I will write one more. We have minus two to the fifth. This is for k equals five over four to the four. Okay, then we continue. Now is when we can realize without a doubt, we have a geometric series because every single time as you move from one term to the next, you're multiplying by the exact same number. And this is what makes a geometric series geometric. We can see here the numerator, we're multiplying by negative two. And in the denominator, we're multiplying by four. So this is negative one half. So now let's do the work for the problem. We realize this is geometric. Um, the R is negative one half absolute value of r less than one, this will converge. Well, we need to find the sum. The directions were find the sum or show the series diverges. To find the sum, well, I need the a, but we also see it right here. So a is four over four, which is one. And so my sum, the formula is a over one minus r. In this case, it's one divided by one plus a half. And we want to write this as a simplified fraction. We have a three halves in the denominator. So this is two thirds. We have found the sum of this geometric series. Next question, number four. Okay, this one's a quick one because look, we have n factorial dominates the numerator. And we have this part, four times n factorial dominates the denominator. And so you can think about the terms, they are not going to zero. Let's write it down. We take a limit as n goes to infinity of the terms, which is n factorial plus two to the n, and then we divide by 10 plus four times n factorial. This is one over four. Just thinking about growth rates, now, in particular, one over four is not equal to zero. So quote the test by the term test. The series n equals zero to infinity of this diverges. Term test is one of the easiest ones to use. It's also easily missed. People don't glance at the terms and realize they're not going to zero. And it's also easily misused because if the terms go to zero, term test tells you nothing. Okay, number five, this will use properties here. So overall, because I have a plus, I do not see one geometric series, but what I have is written as a sum of two geometric series. And so I can find the sum by breaking it into a sum of two and using properties. So if you have two convergent series, two convergent series, and you add them term by term, this converges and it converges to the sum of 
the two sums of the series. So let's look at these individually. Here and here. These are both convergent. In fact, as I work this, maybe I will move them down here. So let's look at this series and let's look at this series. And then we could just add the two numbers up. Okay, starting at the first one, this one, geometric. My initial term, always we evaluate at the lowest index that we see. These both start at zero. So we evaluate at the lowest index that we see. In this case, A is three divided by seven. And my R, one over seven. If you don't see the R, well, you can just write out some terms, kind of like we did with the last example. And um, then you will you can spot the R is what we multiply from one term to the next. Okay, so A is three over seven. R is one over seven. You see absolute value of R less than one. This will converge and we can find the sum. A over one minus R. This will be three over seven divided by one minus one over seven. One minus one over seven. So this is three over seven times seven over six. This sum is one half. Now, let's look at the other one. Very similar. Once again, we have a geometric series. This time I have a different A and I have a different R. So here are my A, evaluate at the lowest index that you see. This would be three to the zero over seven, which is one over seven. And here my R is three over seven. Once again, if you don't spot the R, just start writing out some terms. Absolute value of R less than one converges, and we can calculate the sum of this geometric series. A over one minus R. This is um, one over seven divided by one minus three over seven. So here I have one over seven times seven over four. This gives me one over four. Now to finish the problem, the sum of the series I was asked for in number five, we just add. So we have one half plus one over four. We have three over four. This one converges and this is the sum of the series. Last one, number six. Term test. We see immediately the terms are not going to zero. So let's write out our work. We take a limit as n goes to infinity of natural log 5n divided by n plus 1. How do we find this limit? Well, really what's happening is natural log is a continuous function. We may bring the limit inside. Oh, maybe I'll write that down as a remark. So this would be the natural log of the limit as n goes to infinity of 5n over n plus one. Now, what is this going to? Well, when I look at it, I see n and n and they match. So this will go to five over one. If you don't see that, you could divide every single term by n. You could also do L'Hopital one time, but inside the log is definitely going to five. So the limit of the terms is the natural log of five. Natural log of five is not equal to zero. And so we quote the test by the term test and we state the conclusion. The conclusion is the series diverges. This was the last of our six questions from section 5.2. Thank you so much students.